Welcome to Business Smarts Radio with Tom and Dr. Dane, the clean approach to building your successful business. Now, let's introduce Tom Borg and Dr. Dave Miles. Welcome to Business Smarts Radio with Tom and Dr. Dave, where we bring you the clean approach to building your successful business. And by clean, we're not talking about spink and span and dust bombs. This podcast is all about the acronym CLEAN. We're all about communication, leadership, engagement. And no drama. And no drama. But typically, it's Tom and I that are doing the program. But today, we decided to bring in a special guest, Larry Clement. And I wanted to have Tom introduce Larry from JKL Associates. So, Tom, go ahead and uh, tell us uh, why Larry is here and give us a little bit of an introduction. Sure. Well, we wanted to bring some experts to our program to add to the information we're providing to all of our listeners. And Larry's a great one to bring in. So let me tell you a little bit about Larry. He's a promise guide and business strategist who enjoys helping business leaders attain higher levels of results. Now, right now, businesses are going through all kinds of changes with this COVID-19 experience. And Larry's got some ideas and insights that he's going to share with us today that I think all businesses can gain from. So, Larry, go ahead. Well, thanks for inviting me on the show today and welcome to all of uh, your, uh, your audience out there. We've all been going through quite a, uh, a change in the way we uh, operate our businesses. And uh, a lot of times we get lost in uh, what's going on around us rather than taking a look at what is the genuine opportunity that's presented to us. And in, in conversations with, uh, with Dave and Tom, uh, we, we thought it might be valuable for you to take advantage of this unique time in our history, which has caused all of us to uh, hit the pause button. Um, it's pretty rare in business history that we get the opportunity to do a redo. Uh, most of the time we are running at the, the pace of business and uh, we have to make decisions, and those decisions are based upon the available information at the moment. Sometimes it's really good information, and other times we're making it based upon information that is yet to be determined. But at this point in time, because of the pandemic, all businesses have been placed almost at a restart mode. Uh, we're reopening our doors, depending upon the geography you are located in. You're being governed by everything from, you know, local municipality code to state code to CDC code and the like. And so we're all navigating this and we're a little bit, you know, to be honest with you, overwhelmed with all this new fandangled stuff. We got to somehow work into our business and work into our budgets. I mean, I don't think any of us in January uh, thought we were going to need a PPE budget, you know, that uh, personal protective equipment budget, <laughs> let alone the additional janitorial sanitation budget, which is, you know, has gone up uh, for uh, sanitizer and the like. So, you know, there's been a lot of changes, but I want to take this conversation and rather than dwell on the stuff that we are dealing with, Pause for a moment and reimagine or rethink your business because we're all coming out of this. Uh, if your competition was a, was a leg up on you in January, they no longer are a leg up on you in July. We're all at the same place. So we all have a real cool once in a lifetime business opportunity to start at the same starting line. And so as we open up and go out into the marketplace, we have to look at our business through a different set of lenses. Our consumers, whether they be business to business or you know business to the end consumer, their buying habits have changed. And the services and products that you offer need to evolve with them. As example, a year ago, you started to see home delivery of groceries from some of the grocery you know, chains. People played with it. As of COVID-19, people use it. Mm. Uh, and, and this is not something that suddenly is going to go away. I spoke with some consumers. They really like this idea now of, you know, going online from their home, putting an order in, 
and have somebody drive it to their home or they drive to the grocery store into the pickup line and they simply have it loaded into their vehicle and they don't have to go into the store. They don't have to deal with, you know, that confusion. So this is just one example of how we as a business community have an opportunity. We can take a look and say, what are these consumer trends, whether they begin be business purchasing, whether they be business services, how are we as an organization going to rethink what we do and realign our business? Because if we don't, the business that we are going to emerge out of this with is going to be different. Consumer trends are going to be different. And that's just one example. So, you know, as we talk about this, you know, I invite, you know, Tom and Dave to throw some industries out there because I've been working across a variety of industries. We have the fortunateness of not being pigeonholed into one particular industry. You know, for instance, uh, in, in the restaurant industry, you know, the restaurant industry has been hit very hard, the entertainment industry. We have an office both in Michigan and in Florida. And in Orlando, about 80% of all the business around the, uh, the Disney Universal Mega down there is all about, you know, hospitality. Right. And so, I mean, that industry right there has been significantly impacted. I mean, just recently, as of last week, uh, Disney reported, uh, I think it was $3.8 billion loss for the first quarter. Um, big companies are taking the hit as well as the small business, but small business doesn't have the same runway length in terms of cash flow. Uh, and that's really what I'm concerned about with most of the small businesses we deal with is we've had the opportunity to get access to things like, uh, you know, the payroll protection program, uh, the, the uh, disaster loans from the SBA. You know, these are all good tools and I hopefully you have uh, put them into your strategy to take advantage of them. On the other side of the coin, um, at this point in time, those programs have a finality. So now we have to go back into our magical bag of startup tricks and rethink about our business. And when we're bringing employees back, the roles that you originally had for them, the, the role descriptions have changed. People are hybrid um, and companies are going to stay with a hybrid model for some foreseeable future. In some cases, if you've seen the big companies, you know, the, the Googles and the, the, the tech companies, they're planning on not bringing people back until 2021. And in many cases, they aren't gonna bring them back at all in terms of having to work physically in space. So mm -hmm. uh, I guess uh, if you're a, a commercial landlord and you got office space, um, you're gonna need to be thinking about how you wanna reinvent that space. What's going to be that next optimal use for it? So now is the time to really get an opportunity to, to take this once in a lifetime and if you made some mistakes, we all do, uh, putting your business in motion, you actually got this opportunity to reinvent those, retake that back and do it a little different way and, and, and come to the marketplace with some new ideas. Larry, how about this? When it comes to reinventing, how do businesses do that? What are some of the strategies you'd suggest? Well, the, well, the first thing you have to do is understand your purpose. You know, what, what, what's the reasoning? Why are you in business? And, and what is it that your customer needs, not wants, that your organization can provide value to them? Uh, relationships are critical. Those organizations that went into this pandemic with really strong relationships are faring out far better than those that treated their customers just as simply that as a customer. If you look at what's going on in your business, what your core purpose is, and understand what your core values are in terms of how you want to have those relationships, it allows you then to rethink what's the platform you're going to launch on in terms of you know, the materials, the products, the services that are now in demand as opposed to what was in demand six months ago. And you mm -hmm. gotta just look all across the different sectors you, you participate in. Every, Every business is going to be a little bit different. It's also, and this may sound very strange, this is a really, really good time to cut down on some of your customers that might have been customers for a period of time, but their real customer value proposition to you in terms of profitability, they take a lot of time, but they don't generate a lot of profit. 
now may be the time to look through that book of business and see where you can optimize your profitability. Say, so go ahead and getting ready of the 20% of your customers that are causing you 80% of your headaches. Absolutely. Use the Pareto principle and, and clean out. I'm, I'm a big fan of sorting out the bottom 10% of your customer base on an annual basis and adding 10 at the top and losing 10 at the bottom. <laughs> very good. Very good. So what, uh, I think the, to Tom's question, if depending on the industry you're in, it's, it's easy when you can start to see some consumer trends and say, Hey, I can hop on this or I can jump on that or, Hey, that's a great idea. But any ideas for the folks that are kind of standing there like now what, when they have that question, like, okay, well, I can wait and see some trends. And like I said, this EIDL or PPP money is going to help kind of build a little bit more, you know, landing space. And you're right. Small businesses in general just don't have it. It's, um, and it's funny that you were talking about the big businesses taking a hit. And I guess I'll give you my best lawyer, my best lawyer answer, my best lawyer response to that. I guess it, it depends. Depends on what big business, you know, like you said, your Disney's, your entertainment ones are taking a beating. Your um, Costco's, Walmart's, you know, Home Depot's are, um, Probably, um, this is, this is their worst year ever. You know, let's just say it's, <laughs> you know, they're, they're probably going to do okay and survive until next year. Let's just say it's, it's possible. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, for those small businesses that are just kind of like, now what, uh, what, what would you recommend? Well, I, I think it, let, if, if we were to use an example of a dry cleaner, Mm -hmm. Pretty basic small business. There's one in every small town somewhere. You know, uh, probably at one point in time, the majority of their business was walk-in business. The average consumer would come and they drop their stuff off on a Monday and maybe they'd pick it up on a Wednesday or whatever the cycle time was for that particular dry cleaner. Well, th that dry cleaner now has an opportunity to say, can I go out and engage my customer in their space? Can I put in place a reasonable opportunity to have a pickup and delivery service that allows my customer base to not worry? Now, a lot of people are working from home, all right? So we're not using maybe the same dress attire that we used to, but oddly enough, you know, there's a lot of studies about people getting up just like we are. We may be working remotely but putting that shirt and tie on or that suit coat puts a mindset of performance in place. They're still using those typical dry clean products. So if we look back and say, oh, they're working at home, they're not going to need us, which is one way to go about the, the grumpy approach. <laughs> or we can say, what I need to do is my customer base needs me to provide them this new value added service. Yes, there's an initial cost to it, but now you have an opportunity to differentiate yourself. Unfortunately, there's going to be some businesses that are not going to make it through. Now is the time to start to put yourself in the marketplace and differentiate yourself when the dry cleaner down the street goes out of business because they've run out of runway. Right. You now have a presence in the marketplace and you are differentiated. That's so the type of rethinking I'm talking about. Gotcha. So just to kind of reiterate your point, and you had the dry cleaning industry, and that's a great example. You know, you might wear the suit coat, but you know, um, you might not need the pants dry cleaned as much because you know people are still using shorts and jammy pants on Zoom and not um, necessarily their best dress pants. And uh, shucks, and I forgot that rule today. I should have put uh, my jammies on. I saw. Leave the cam just leave the camera directly facing where it's at, and it'll be <laughs> just fine, right? Not yet. We're, good. We're good on that, right? <laughs> And replacement is key. We just did an episode on that. We're getting ready to broadcast it. So check that episode out. But anyway, so let's just say for argument's sake that it's going to be take a, the dry cleaning industry just because of the demand. People aren't wearing as many of these uh, dry cleanables. 30%, 30-40% down in business total. If you're one of those companies that has gone out and differentiated themselves and the people that said, nope, I'm sitting right here. You bring your stuff to me or else. Yes, there are if there's 30% down, you're going to need 30% less dry cleaners working at full capacity. But the ones that will survive are the ones that choose to do something different and try and differentiate itself and be creative, not the ones that have stodgily just kind of sat there and like, this is our business and this is how we're going to do it forever. And uh, so yeah, it sounds like I, I those are the guys that are going to survive. Of, 
I think this on probably the largest concern I have for the small business owner is the desire to return to normal. Mm. That, that That's probably my number one concern for the small business owner because it's not. It, 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 it may have some inklings of looking like normal, but it's going to be different because oddly enough, business evolves every single year. It moves, it changes, but because it's so gradual, it's like the erosion of sand along the side of a river. We don't see that it's falling away grain by grain. This reality of this pandemic, we've lost banks. <laughs> this is like the hurricane coming in and taking out uh, 20, 30, 40 feet of shoreline. And at this point, that 30 feet of shoreline ain't coming back. It, it ain't coming back in a long time for the life of most you know, business owners. So what we have to do is we got to decide what are we going to do? Are we going to put in some you know, shoring it up or are we just going to you know, put planks on the front door and walk away? And you know, I don't know if that's really an answer. All it does is it makes a quick decision that I think you may regret if you're not being creative. This is really a test of creativity. Um, and it's a pretty exciting time because most of the time as business owners, our minds are not always trained around creativity. Uh, we're, we're, we're dealing with decision making. And we think we're creative, but we're thinking creatively within the confines of the past norm. Mm. So that makes a lot have, of sense. We have to really stop and say, okay, I want to become a child again. I want to be playful. Um, one of the things we've been doing with our coaching work is we've been trying to help owners be playful. I know it sounds like an odd thing at a time when COVID's around, but we have to be playful in a mindset because that's going to be the magic ingredient. You know, that's the dust. That's the, that's the pixie dust of reinventing your business so that we can effectively move your business from where it is today, taking advantage of the creativity. And it's not just the owner. Let me, let me make sure I emphasize something here. It's really the collection of the creativity of the team. And, and it's, it's always exciting to me when you get a group of people together and you can start chatting and you, you take away the barriers of what they think would be a foolish idea and allow that to flow. Because although the idea may not be practical, that idea generates another idea, which is. But if we cut them off at the knees to begin with, we lose the flow of creativity. And that's but what really is an opportunity today. Well, and I think you're right. And it's the funny part about that is when you're talking about creativity is just from a, a psychological or temperamental value that you look at, you know, what section of your business leaders, business owners, leadership in general are you talking to? Because if you think about it, a lot of folks that are really entrepreneurial, uh, if you look at the psychological literature, they're more in the band with creators, Mm -hmm. And the creativity, because mm -hmm. they have to create something out of nothing. Right. And what happens? They have a founder who's got a tremendous vision. They create this thing, and now they got to run this thing. And then they have to bring in the uh, analytical <laughs> types, the managerial types, you know, the folks that aren't as creative to run and maintain the system that they've created. So it's two different skill sets. So I think the folks that are small business owners, and they have to play both sides of the coin, but they are entrepreneurial. They are creative. They are the kind of the creative types. I think that can pivot and do different things and think differently. And to your point, and I'll turn over to Tommy real quick. I love what you were talking about as far as getting your whole team involved, because to me that really strikes a chord on the leadership level, because, you know, if you think you have all the answers as the business owners, the managers, the leader, and you're the smartest person in the room, they're good. The people that are drawing a paycheck from you want to keep drawing a paycheck from you because they like paying the electric bill and the mortgage. You're like, yeah, boss, you're the you're the man. I mean, you're the most, you're the smartest person in the room. Go ahead, just keep feeding us the ideas. And because you did cut them off at the knees, like you said, and you created an environment that does not create a safe space for that engagement, they're not going to. They'll jump through the hoops, play the game, and then what happens? You lose out on the creative prospect of 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 employees, however many employees you have, 5,200 employees, all of those potential good ideas that one of those might have saved or dramatically increased your business. You're not going to get that anymore. Hmm. I, and if I, if I can just jump in there, I think 
to play off of that, one of the things that is also going on that business leaders need to understand, people have been given an opportunity to rethink their futures. Uh, and, and a lot of them are doing that. A lot of them are saying, "What? how do I align my personal desires and what, what I'm about as a person with my company's purpose? And when they're out of alignment and, and there's an absence or void of creativity or an absence of void of true, genuine, I'm going to use the word authentic engagement, uh, they're going to look elsewhere. Um, they, 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 and they have an opportunity to do so. So not only do we need to evaluate what's going on with our consumers, one of our consumers, and it sounds odd, but maybe it's just the odd way I look at the world, your employees are consumers of your culture. And they either consume your culture in a positive way or they reject on it. And so one of the things is, you know, business leaders we have to do is think about what is the environmental culture we're bringing out of COVID and can, in fact, we make that a huge differentiator to attract the top and the best in class? Because I've actually had, I'm going to say three or four clients at least do some nice quality upgrading of talent at this unique time because people have said, hey, you know, the place I worked was good, but wow, I want great for the rest of my cycle of time in the workplace, and it's out there. That sounds good. It is. Okay. Well, all right, Larry, so if you could wrap it up, what would you want our listeners to remember about uh, your message here today? I think the to, to sum it up is give yourself the opportunity to pause, be in the silence of creativity, allowing you to truly evaluate all the dynamics of your business so that when you look at your business, you have a unique opportunity to rethink, reimagine, restart your business. And don't, don't let this unique opportunity go by the wayside because uh, it's, it's genuinely, there's, as, there's, in my opinion, there's as much opportunity in the market space today as there was pre-pandemic. The difference is, is that the businesses that are coming out of it were all at the same starting line, which is such a cool thing. Great. So if our listeners want to get a hold of you, what's your um, contact information? We'll also put it on the screen, but just go ahead. And yeah. So, so, you know, depending upon the, the, where you're at in the country, you can either give us a call in our Michigan office at area code 313-527. 7945 or our Florida office at it's outside Orlando in Kissimmee 407 984 7246 uh, or just send us an email uh, Larry at JKL Associates.com or go out to our website I think you know our, our website has been uh, architectured around helping you understand and letting our customers we have our customers right on our website telling you about what we're all about. So go out to www.jklassociates.com or our model, our framework for helping businesses is called Promise Culture, www.promiseculture.com. Okay. Appreciate you guys for having us on board and I hope your uh, listeners not only benefit from your ongoing tutelage, but also take this opportunity to uh, go forward and make good business. Thank you, Larry. It sounds great. Well, thanks, everybody, for uh, listening to this episode of Business Smarts Radio, uh, so where we bring you the clean approach to building your successful business. And by clean, we're not talking about spick and spin and dust mops. Like I said, we're all about, and Larry hit on a lot of these today, communication, leadership, engagement. And no drama. And no drama. Drama this time is going to put you into bankruptcy court. It says <laughs> drama is not going to be good for you. It's great for Facebook. It's not so well for small business. So anyway, you guys have a great one, and we will see you on the next episode. Thank you, guys.